My balls suck my balls. How would you children like to suck on my chocolate salty balls? Oh, you mean like a chocolate candy? <gasps> no, I mean my balls. Ladies and gentlemen, that's right, ladies and gentlemen, and all forms of life form. Welcome back to another edition. Suck my balls. SMB. Uh, Suck my balls. Mm -hmm. A South Park review. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, of course, am not alone. As each and every week, I am joined by one, two, three, or more guys. <laughs> enjoy South Park. And I'm not telling no lies. No cap here, dog. For real, for real. Surrounded by lots of guys. So let's get... That was a low-hanging fruit, sorry. Oh, that was man. also a low-hanging fruit, sorry. First off, shout out to our boy... The doctor of thugonomics. Uh, economics. Oh. Uh, He's also the doctor of scooponomics and the doctor of love and lust. He is your 2022 Red Rocks South Park <sighs> Day One Trivia Champion. Dirty, dirty, dirty Joe Vernoldo, the trivia. God, shout out to him. Maybe he'll join us a little bit late last week as well on episode 160. Uh, not uh, a big deal. No. I am not alone. You can hear him in the background here. Ladies and gentlemen. Mm. This man <laughs> likes to bring the pain <laughs> in a digital marketing game. He's a man who solicits those picks to get your clicks. <laughs> By God, he does it well. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Dane Becker. Hey, hey, hey everybody. How's it going? I hated that intro. I literally sounded like the nostalgia critic there for a second. It's like, what? I came on super, super hard. It's almost like one of those YouTube intros. It's like, guys, I've got something really great for you today. But first, our sponsor, Blue Apron. I just wanted to do that intro just so I could do the voice. Dane yeah. Becker, welcome yeah. back. Yeah, you know, honestly, that sounded kind of like our missing guest, Joe Fernola, who, you know, it, you. It, was, it was almost Proud like he you. was here. Uh, we love here our in America. Here. Dane has the right to be who he wants to be. God damn it. Yeah, annoying. <laughs> SMB approved. Okay, ladies and integrity. Uh, SMB plus. We're, we're back for episode 161. Woo it, it is a holy episode. Sanctum fruitus hava who hippotis hippotis. Yeah, we're back mm -hmm. for one of my favorite episodes in this season. Mm -hmm. uh, every time Easter comes around, anytime somebody wants to know about why they should paint eggs, I now refer to this episode. I go, do you really want to know? Or do you should you ask yourself one question? Should I just shut up and paint the egg? Mm. Usually, I just shut up and paint the egg because they don't want to go down that rabbit hole thing. They don't want to have to Leonardo uh, Vinci the Easter Bunny. Rabbit hole, yikes. Get it? Ooh. Rabbit hole. <laughs> 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 What's up, Doc? Uh, What's up, Doc? <laughs> why does anybody listen to this? <laughs> <laughs> well, people keep downloading. We shout out to you, our number one fan, Jack Helms. I don't know. How you Ooh. doing, Jack? Just, all of our members on Patreon right now for the five dollar shout outs, uh, Jack Pan. <laughs> <laughs> well, this episode uh, is, of course, surrounds Easter. Ugh. Was Easter a big t thing for you? Is it a big thing in your family, Dane? Uh, yeah, I mean, for like children, which I think it's literally what this episode comments on, not to get into that already, <laughs> like as kids, you know, m not much Jesus, but there was a lot of egg painting, which I honestly wasn't good at. All my eggs just came out like tinted red, even if there were like we were using paint specifically for eggs and you weren't doing that weird, like poor people food coloring shit. Like if you were doing it the normal right way, <laughs> which we did not often, I still couldn't make those things look anything like less like they just look like eggs. They look like eggs. Well, I would say like food coloring definitely is not the way to go if you're going to paint the eggs. I mean, no, for, for no, sure. just literally because we Cause were all it does is just poor. makes the outer shell a color like it just. No. Tinted. Yeah, it doesn't. Our, our egg hunts were really lame because they were real eggs. And they just looked like, I don't know. You guys ever get to, my parents always used to get plastic ones, too. And those were nice because they could just reuse them. That is nice. Yeah, it's sometimes kind of gross, though, because like they won't wash them or anything and just put them in a bag and put them in the basement. And they just throw them out and you oh. have like last year's mud on it. 
Mm. Oh, and it's got a little candy in it. I never had to wash them, so maybe they did. Uh, so the synopsis in the title of this episode, guys, is and gals and all beings of form. It's fantastic Easter special. It is the fifth episode of season 11. It is the 158th episode overall of South Park as it aired on April the 4th, 2007. And as I reminded you at the top of the show, this is episode 161. Mm-hmm. So let's rock and roll. Determined to get the real story by behind why Stan himself has to paint the freaking eggs for Easter mm-hmm. every year. Stan falls in with what might be considered an, an eccentric society mm-hmm. that guards a legendary secret. Of course, this is going to parody the Tom Hanks movie at the time. What was that movie called? Mr. Uh, the Da Vinci Code da Vinci starring Code. the renowned symbologist Robert Langdon. <laughs> Robert Langdon. <laughs> uh, oh my God. Don't even mention Dan Brown's name because I'll go into like a 30 minute rant that no one would want to listen to <laughs> about how he's both the smartest and the worst writer that's ever lived. Next to like that one guy that did poetry that, you know. Right. Don't. Well- so here's how the episode starts. The Marsh family is, of course, doing what normal Christian, we'll say white people do in this situation. And that's <laughs> around Easter time, sitting down to, as you mentioned, paint eggs. Mm-hmm. Now, as they're painting these eggs, you can, of course, see Randy is super excited to do this. I, um, yeah. Randy and full in this episode. And his grandfather. Really? Really? Hey, really? Come over here. Just let me die. Just let me die, really. Uh, so, <laughs> not satisfied with the egg dipping and dying and being a, a child of, you know, it, you know, he's gone through a lot of things at this point in time, right? Aliens and you know, you know, different people invading his town, robots, Barbara Streisand, you Barbara know, one or Streisand, two things, you mm-hmm. know, tons of different things, right? So, having to go through all that, Stan, of course, questions. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Why are we painting eggs? And Randy basically tells him, don't worry about it. Just go with it. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Just go Man, with it. My mom told me the same thing. It's crazy. Right? So it's at this point, Stan's like, I'm out of here, and he's going to go off and search for the answers in which he seeks to find whether or not there is a true motive behind the bunny that is on Easter every year, as I speak in riddle here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't like the way some of those uh, peeps are looking like. They're very phallic. I think that's on purpose. So that the Easter bunny can hide them. Right. Ooh, peeps. Yeah, but why? Stanley, Easter celebrates the day that Jesus uh, was resurrected after being going. crucified for our sins. This is triggering. So we dip eggs in colored vinegar and a giant rabbit hides them? <laughs> that's right. That's you right. You don't see the missteps in logic with that? Look, I'm just saying that somewhere between Jesus dying on the cross and a giant bunny hiding <laughs> eggs, there seems to be a, a gap of information. Stanley, just dye your goddamn eggs. I don't feel like coloring eggs. I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly, that that was me. You, you can really relate to that feeling. Like, what kid wants to sit around on Easter Sunday and be like, all right, after church, we're just going to dip some kind of old eggs into cups of water. It is weird. Yeah. I mean, even as a kid, uh, you know, probably around this, I'd say the, when I was 10 or 11 is when I really started to fall out of the religious aspect because <laughs> I've just always been one of those kids that asks questions and it got me in trouble a lot. Uh, yeah. But it also got me far a lot because I'm always like trying to get the most information. So when it came to church and religion, I would just, you know, constantly be asked questions. Why? <laughs> what do you mean? I don't understand. Yeah. <laughs> Can you elaborate? Yeah. You don't have the answer? Okay, does somebody else have the answer? You don't have the answer. So nobody has the answer. So we're all just running around here pretending we have the answer. And pretend- Okay, then I can't play this game. So when it came to Easter eggs, I mostly kept my mouth shut, though, because you always got shit on Easter. It wasn't yeah. money, gifts, or whatever. Once that went away, probably around... 12 or 13 might have been mm-hmm. the last time I did an Easter egg hunt or something like that. Yeah. No more. I didn't fucking care. Anyway, I would just, yeah, like, I think I stopped probably yeah around that same period. I mean, like when does Easter like stop being cool for everyone? Probably around that same age, like you know, from like 12 to 13, honestly, like when puberty starts hitting, 
it's like dipping those eggs just doesn't have that same magic. Honestly, you have to go to Easter at like a rich aunt's house to still care about Easter at that point. Where like, you know, you can open up an egg and be like, oh man, fucking $10. That's why, yeah, that's why I basically, you know, I'm shut for a couple of years. At, at that point, I'm pushing over kids. Like children are getting maimed because I want that $10 egg. Um, you're about to get, I'm um, like, Taekwondo is about to come in handy. Oh, yeah. And I'm it's always to, in a tree and it's I'm like about gold to slide side and I'm about to kick yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. Jump right up there and grab that shit. Break the branch off. Stop hitting kids in the face. Back away. My allowance money. My allowance money. You're damn right. Mm. So uh, it's at this point now Stan runs off to the mall. But we are get a glimpse here of Cartman in the mall. So I want to show this because Cartman basically straight up tells the Easter Bunny, look, no, 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 no. You're a freaking animal. So you have to give me what I want. Carmen exerts his special dominance. You don't give me what I want. I can fucking kill you. Yeah. 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 He literally does. He, uh, you know, knows his place on the food chain. And Carmen is not one to be put down on a ladder. Not one to be trifled with. No, absolutely not. So, and he also like considers the Easter bunny as like a pseudo Santa at this point, which honestly, Carmen's just constantly getting showered with gifts, but it's kind of hilarious that he goes at the Easter bunny like, um, all right, here we go. And I want a Valtor soldier doll for Easter and five crash and go RC cars. Do you have that? Do you have that? Don't you think you have that? You don't ask me questions. You are a rabbit. I am a human. So if you don't bring me what I want for Easter, I can fucking kill you. <laughs> Smile. Bye, Bye Easter Bunny. Bunny. <laughs> <laughs> gives him two thumbs up. All right, can you please explain to me what's going on? I like this huh? too. What is the deal with the coloring the eggs and you hiding them and all that? What does that have to do with Jesus dying on the cross? <laughs> is it symbolic? Are you trying to reference something that happened in biblical times? Answer me. Just look, oh, Ted, I'm, I'm just a guy in a costume. I know that, but I figure you must have some knowledge of what Easter is about if you're playing the Easter Bunny at the mall. Greatest guy in a costume voice ever. Easter's just Easter. Just just go with it, kid. No, I'm not going to just go with it. I'm going to find out what's behind all this. We got to turn the punch bowl. I need a break. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, it, what happens next, Matt? Doesn't he like go and uh, round round the back and call someone classic <laughs> Avengers style? Yeah, so what happens is, is he turns around, he takes his or he picks up the phone, right? And he call makes a phone call and says, We have a turn <laughs> the punch bowl. <laughs> we have a So it's at this point, Stan now exits a mall and he starts walking home. And he soon realizes that he's being chased by men dressed in bunny suits. <laughs> like just I mean, chasing that- him around town. For some reason for some people that's like a regular thing. For some people that's a convention. <laughs> For something, people, what is that called? Uh, a furry a person? Yeah. 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 <laughs> so it's at this point now, Stan running for the, his life. He then runs to his house and unbe- crazy enough to him, like these people, like they, they come into the house. Like, right. They, they don't, they don't stop. They're coming for him. Yeah. It's discovered that Randy and his father are also part of this club. The rabbits. <laughs> It's wabbit season. It's still wabbit. It's still Quinn's. Oh, I hate y'all. No, God, I'll never do that again. I'm sorry. <laughs> Mom, Dad? Anybody home? Not now, Stanley. I'm on the toilet. On the toilet. Dad, you gotta help me. Hang on. I'm taking a crap. Dad, there's Easter Bunnies chasing me. What? They chased me from the mall. I don't know what they want. Your kid is screaming. Dad, open the door. Mm-mm. Dad? We need to talk, talk. Dad. It's okay, there you guys. Go. Randy? Big yeah. pink one. Guess it turns out the kid we're after is my son. son. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's at this point, Best Randy it. reveals to him that they are the hair club for men who have guarded <laughs> the secret of Easter for generations. Mm-hmm. So Randy takes Stan to the headquarters of the Hair Club, yes. uh, where he is going to be initiated into the group. Yeah, uh, he tries to make Stan, of course, uh, put a blindfold on as they're on their way there. And Stan's like, "What are we going to the old VFW outpost or whatever it was outside of town?" And Stan, and then Randy gets upset and pulls the bandana mask off. <laughs> yeah. 
uh, the Masonic Hall or whatever. Uh, mm -hmm. So the he arrives and there's a rabbit named Snowball that is also revered by this group as the direct descendant of another rabbit, which we get into is Randy tells, or first off, he's greeted by his grandfather. Hey, Billy. <laughs> hey, grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> Billy. Hey, Billy. Uh, he's greeted by his grandfather. So Randy then is brings him forth to the Council of Hair Men Club, whatever you want to call them, the Hair Club, for men. And he, <laughs> they, they, they basically tell Stan, if you want to hear the secret of Easter and guard the secret itself, then you have to join the Hair Club for Men. Stan's like, okay, I'll join your club. And Randy's like, no, I don't think you understand, Stan. Join the hair club for, for life. So if, if the Nam symbologist Stan Marsh. The Ryan to do Kyle Brathaski. <laughs> <laughs> the secret of Mother Magdalene. Right. So just as he's about to learn the secret of uh, Easter, Stan's initiation is interrupted as the club is ambushed by a group of ninjas. Uh, the hair club members rush to protect Snowball, and Randy gives the rabbit to Stan, telling him to run. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a good point here to catch up here. We'll do a, a quick clip here and kind of check back in with uh, what's going on in the uh, the hair club here and give you a breakdown of what happens when the ninjas break in. <laughs> Led by that one guy. I like how they do this. In, uh, like That uh, one guy. They do this painting of the eggs as sort of their ceremony. Yeah. Yeah, it, it all starts members. to make sense. Tonight, we determine if a new member is <laughs> worthy of protecting the Who the hell is this guy? Bring <laughs> out the the rabbit. Rabbit. Bring out the rabbit. Is this just <laughs> sort of <laughs> Monty Python? Oh, me. <laughs> All right, so as you hear the song, Same. as I mentioned, then some ninjas jump in. Oh, Maybe. Death, take Snowball and get out of here! Take Maybe the rabbit! Just get out of here! Let's get out of here! Ah, oh. It's Billow Donahue! Where is the rabbit? Fucking Where is the rabbit? So as you saw there at the end of that clip, Bill Donahue showed up just as the uh, ninjas attacked and Stan was able to evade them and escape with the rabbit. Uh, so, <laughs> so now Stan's on the run. And of course, where do you go? The first thing you do is you run to your best friend's house. Runs to yeah. Kyle's house and says, Kyle, can you please help me? Yeah. And Kyle, of course, he asked Kyle, do you know anything about Easter? And Kyle's like, dude, I am, I'm Jewish. I don't know. What, yeah, hey, what are you talking about, about homie? And of course, he, he says... I also don't necessarily want to be involved in this, you know. I don't want to be involved with something dangerous. And Stan's like, "Come on, dude, you know, <laughs> my best friend." <laughs> kind of bullshit. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So Stan and Kyle managed to track down a man named Professor Teabag, which is a spoof of Professor T. Bing, who supposedly knows the secret of the Hair Club. Who wasn't that played by um, Ian McKellen from freaking Gandalf? Wasn't that played by him in Da Vinci Code? Did you ever see the Ron Howard film Da Vinci Code? I can honestly say I've never seen Da Vinci Code. <laughs> what? I mean, I've seen that a hundred times, not because it's really great. It's 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 honestly like the book. It's perfect for the book. It just kind of captures that level of like digestible mediocrity Maybe. that that book entails. And honestly, it's not like. I don't want to say it's it's bad writing, but it's it's got a lot of effort and there is some heart put to it. But God, Lord, God, Lord. This episode's better. This episode's better. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, moving. Let's move into the clip here. Stan and Kyle have showed up at Professor Teabag's house and he's they're looking for real answers on what the hell. Easter is all about. What's going on? Hi, we'd like to speak to a Professor Teabag. <laughs> what is it in regard to? What is it in regard to? Sorry, boys, it's a little late for me to be giving lectures. His name is really Teabing. Please, in the book? do you know anything about the Hair Club for Men? So dumb. The Our keepers, keepers. The, keepers. <laughs> the guardians of the secret. The guardians of the secret. It is too somehow. Come on in. It's my pleasure to jack off to this rabbit. The Hair Club for Men has been around for centuries. <laughs> on the One back of the most famous members. All right, Leonardo Shane Dawson, Dixie. chill. Oh, here we go. 
It's gonna explain the yeah. Last Supper. The Last Supper. The oh, dinner me. Christ had with his disciples the night before he was crucified. It's gonna be a little bit of a long clip, so if you're watching what this on YouTube, you on the table? The screen ca caps here so we can get the copyright. Really? Look to Jesus' right. The food mm -hmm. which is a little different color than the others. What do you see? That, that's, that's a it potato. It looks like an egg. Yes. Look the egg marks the secret. <laughs> it lies directly in front of St. Peter. Saint Who is St. Peter? Peter? He was the disciple that Jesus made into the first pope. Exactly. Egg. But there's something the church egg. didn't tell you. Exactly. In actuality, Peter wasn't a man at all. Uh, St. Peter, Peter was a what rabbit. Was a rabbit. <laughs> Peter Rabbit. Peter Rabbit. Of course, the church wouldn't allow right to paint Peter as a rabbit, so we painted him that as a man, look, but Peter left clues. Mm -hmm. Look closely. Look closely. I don't see like it. Look, look closely. closely. He looks like a guy. This scene in the movie look was actually kind of cool and like ridiculous. Remind me of the Avatar scene of unobtainium. With laser technology, we can look beneath the paint. With laser technology. The originally painted. Here it comes. Laser technology, we can just <laughs> use it with the rabbit. Here it is. It's Saint Peter. There it is, buried beneath the paint. That is Saint Peter, a rabbit. Jesus, <laughs> and he continues on to say that Jesus knew that one man could not make, you know, decisions for the church. So he put a rabbit in place, which, if you think about it from a philosophical standpoint, that actually kind of does make sense. Like, one man really couldn't tell a whole fucking millions of people that what God really thinks. The leaders of man cannot be man. The leaders of man should only be holy. There you go, I guess. Is how the Pope you... should be more communicative of God rather than... Uh, However you want to be biblical, okay? I pray to the universe and I just say, hey, universe, you out there, I appreciate <laughs> you. Can you There's give me a hit? Give me on up. Give me a, give me a big old... <laughs> get on your lap and help me out here. <laughs> Uh, despite my relationship with Christianity, I still have a lot of dogma inside of me. Give me a lot of leg up. <laughs> or that too. Uh, so, <laughs> so he has, after the explanation in regards to what the rabbit is, uh, Teabag explained that Jesus knew that no human could speak for all Christianity without acts of corruption and the rabbit mm. were pure, tolerant, and incorruptible. So this is why the Pope's mitre or the hat as well, if you might want to be like technical is shaped to accommodate rabbit's ears. Uh, <laughs> he also explained that the church decided to bury the secret and put a man in charge. Yeah. Since the hair club for men society members have decorated eggs for generations to keep the secret in Da Vinci's painting alive. Mm -hmm. It was on to explain that snowball is a, actually a direct descendant from St. Peter and that Stan's father and the members of the Hair Club for Men have been kidnapped by the Vatican who wish to cover up this secret, viewing it as blasphemy. And before we can continue, more min more ninja minions attack, kill Teabag, but this allows Stan and Kyle to escape, uh, putting Marsh. And then what they do as well is they th uh, Teabag goes into his I guess office. He grabs a <laughs> bag of, pe of peeps. He throws the peeps in the microwave, and turns them on for ten seconds, and they explode. Now I will say that actually will happen. Not like fill up your whole house. But you can put peeps in the microwave and it will explode it. Who microwaves peeps anyway? Also, who eat like let's just say who eats peeps? Who eats peeps anyway? First let's of just all, start right there. No, what, peeps are horrible. So don't defend them. So what don't you do is you hold on to the peeps till the end of the year. It's the last day of the year for school. Oh god. And then you sneak into the teacher's lounge and you I don't like where this is going. Put the peeps in the microwave, you turn that on for 30 seconds and you walk out. <laughs> And then they like start a small fire, and they, then many well, children perish. Fire. They won't start a small fire; they'll just explode. And then, like, unfortunately, the teachers' lounge is next to the kindergarten classroom, and then just, the fire just spreads and rapidly. The crazy thing is, is then you always hear that teacher run in to stop. And the he microwave. killed the younglings. <laughs> they run in to open up and stop the microwave, but as soon as they uh -huh. stop it and open up, more peeps uh -huh. explode at them. So yeah, of it course. just becomes a, a peep illusion. Someone just gets hot peep in their face. They just start I'm, to I, scream and. I blame Christian. I just wanted to be one of his peeps, you know? <laughs> what? what? Where did that go? Did know. you just do all that to make a peeps joke? I swear to God, you told that whole story just to be able to see I want him to be my peeps. I want to be one of the peeps. So Stan and Kyle now go to the Vatican, where Stan hmm. turns the rabbit over to Donahue's men on the condition that the hair club members must be Donahue. Free, and the snowball remained unharmed. And I have a big problem with Jerry Seinfeld. Yeah. 
Stan, just give him whatever he wants. Give him the rabbit. How could you do that, Stan? I would have died for that rabbit. <laughs> dude, yeah. Randy is such a poser, dude. He is kind of a poser, bro. He's kind That's of why a- he's so good friends with Gerald. Gerald's the, the biggest fucking asshole on the planet. He's kind of a poser, isn't he? All right, so here's what happens. Uh, you know, Stan comes into the Vatican. D? <laughs> oh, thank God! <laughs> hand it over, Stan! They're gonna kill me! Give him the rabbit! Yes, hand it Catholic over. Catholic ninjas. First, you have to promise you won't hurt it, and that you'll let everybody yeah. go. We promise. Or snowball. We swear it on the cross. Just hand over the bunny, Stan! Okay, fine. What are you doing, Stan? I would have died Stanley, why did you do that? <laughs> I would have proudly died for that rabbit. <laughs> you said hand over the bunny! No! That is not the way we're remembering it. <laughs> not the way we're remembering it. Hey, what the hell? Bill, we have the rabbit. It's all we need. Don't be soft, your holiness. These whores must be punished whores. in front of everyone. You swore on the cross, <laughs> Bill. Though. Yeah. Too bad for you. It was a, was double, a double cross. cross. <laughs> ah, oh, Bill Donahue. It was a... Bill Donahue. Cross, cross. That's really what Bill... Did. This is actually what Bill Donahue believes. <laughs> Right. So now after they've taken Stan hostage and everyone else mm-hmm. hostage, if you will, mm-hmm. uh, G- uh, Donahue responds by saying that this is what Jesus would himself would have wanted. He is risen. <laughs> he is risen. Now, of course, Pope Benedict doesn't like what Donahue's doing with the public. And he eventually doesn't he at first he also wants to cook and kill the bunnies. So he tried to. Oh, shit. And, and they're not bunnies, folks. They're, they're just people. men in bunny suits. Right. He wrangles them up outside, and he's like, "We're gonna have rabbit stew." And the that's Pope's disgusting. Like, the Pope's like, "This isn't very Christian." And <laughs> like, I am above the law. Um, he is risen. So at at this point now, Stan and Kyle are separated in different cells, mm-hmm. and Kyle prays for Jesus to come while he's in prison. <laughs> And Jesus shows up. Boy, does he. Um, and not only does he show up, he also gets arrested <laughs> and thrown in jail. <laughs> because, like, at first, like, Stan and Kyle are like, yeah, we, our, our prayer worked. And then yeah. he's like, actually, no, I was responding to someone else. Yeah. Yeah. So, it feels very much like an Adam McKay film where, like, Jesus comes back. This was actually what would happen. Right. Probably so. He'd just be locked up somewhere in the Vatican. And then in typical Vatican, you know, stereotypical fashion, they lock up the Jews together. They put Jesus and Kyle both in the same cell. And it's at this point, Jesus, uh, Kyle oh, tells Jesus, don't you have any superpowers? You can help us. And <laughs> Jesus tells him, well, the only superpower I have is resurrection. I don't like this. Part. And Kyle's like, all right, well, do you need help? You know, basically, do you need help killing yourself? And <laughs> Jesus is like, well, I can't kill myself. If I kill myself, no, what the hell? So he basically tells Kyle that the only way that they could – anybody, everybody can be saved right now and all his friends and his dad <laughs> is blah, blah, blah is that he has to kill Jesus. Yep. And Kyle does it on the one you know concession that Jesus can never tell Eric Cartman about this. <laughs> <laughs> yep. You can never bring this up to Eric Cartman. He's like, I understand. <laughs> he can't Jesus. No, I'm just saying, he can't Jesus. All right, so after, like I said, Jesus shows up here, he gets arrested, all these people are going to be eaten. All right, so here's Jesus in jail now. Poor Kyle. Do you have any superpowers? Not as a mortal, only in death. As a mortal. Wait, that's it. We have <laughs> no choice, Kyle. You're going to have to kill me. <laughs> Don't. What? what? Stab me with this. If I no. die, I can resurrect outside the bars. No. No way. No, no way, dude. Yourself. Suicide is blasphemy. <laughs> There's no choice here, Kyle. Dude, you don't understand. I, I'm a Jew. No. I have a few hang-ups about killing Jesus. Just make it quick. <laughs> Through the neck. So do I. Rise again immediately. So do I. Don't make me do this. I hate this My part. son, there is no time. Do it! Eric Cartman can never know about this. I understand. <laughs> this is a deep secret he has Kyle, to carry. Happy Easter. Happy Easter, Jesus. Happy Easter, Jesus. Oh. 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 Oh, Christ, Jesus splurts out here. This <laughs> really amazing break there. And his uh, falls off. Uh, and Jesus dies. 
Bad you react you react and you stand there and you say you wish and you were done. Uh, excuse me, there's a part of me that still has that dogmatic practice. Catholicism is too deeply rooted. Christianity is in my bones. <laughs> I watch that scene and I get scared on the inside. <laughs> Christianity is in my bones. He is a rhythm. All right, so for now, following this, the final scene here is mm-hmm. Jesus. He's resurrected outside of the bars like he said he would be. <laughs> yeah. And this all takes place in the final scene here now with the rabbit stew being cooked. So they're throwing <laughs> regular rabbits, and then they're just about to start throwing in the people, regular men. <laughs> wait, okay, so wait, 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 what's the recap here so far? So we've got – um uh stand didn't know what easter was right uh he finds out that easter is centered around this secret rabbit that is actually saint peter the pope right um uh, and then he gets locked up by bill donahue who's trying to keep that a secret still right. and then he has his friend kyle have to kill jesus um right. so jesus can resurrect himself outside of the bars let me do the cross here real quick that's okay. right yep. and and then uh now they're boiling this bunny, this St. Peter bunny, Rabbit stew. alive. Rabbit stew. Rawr, rawr. Snowball! Yes! One more time, baby. Jesus! Jesus! Stop! That rabbit is of holy descent. Why won't you go away? One man! Cannot Bill Donahue be the voice says of the to Christ Jesus. Enough of this blasphemy! I'm the Pope now! That means I am the right, voice he, of God! The other Pope. Not anymore. Not I'm anymore. removing you from your position. <laughs> not anymore, you're not. Not anymore, you're not. Right? Back to back episode. Uh, <laughs> like a slow motion. <laughs> Goodbye, Bill Donahue. All right, then here's the conclusion of the episode. So, right, just... Now the rabbit has taken the rightful place yeah, on the cross. Easter bunnies are back in the crowd. The bunny is upon his throne in the Vatican. What should we tell the world about how to run their lives? Nothing. Here it is. It isn't saying anything. Yes. Just as Jesus intended it. Stanley, I'm so proud of you. Okay. You've learned so very much. Yes, this bunny, bro. Yeah, I've learned not to ask questions. Just die the eggs and keep my mouth shut. Yep. That's my boy. That's my boy. <laughs> <laughs> and hope they have ten dollars in. Just die the, me die me. the eggs and keep my mouth fucking shut. Burp, 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 burp. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna do it for this recap. We'll be back on the other side with some more trivia pop culture and information as well as our final thoughts on the episode will be right back i just want to do like a like a like a like a old school like 90s DJ. we'll be right back i liked it subscribe to suck my balls a south park review on spotify apples itunes anywhere you want to download a podcast just type that in subscribe to our feed You'll get the latest, greatest episode each and every week. You can also listen to us on YouTube and go back and watch some videos or any of our library. It's all there. Suck my balls, South Park Review. All right. Once again, shout out to our sponsors, of course, provided by Spreaker. As long as you, the listener, continue to just, you know, listen and download the show, we get ad revenue, as I've explained before. So all you got to do is listen. It's tick for tack. We keep the server and all of the episodes up for you, distributed across all multiple podcast platforms. And all you got to do is listen. We're not even trying to get you to buy shit. Maybe maybe we'll get you to try to buy stuff later, but not right now. Namaste. 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 But let's get into some fantastic Easter special uh, trivia. Now, of course, I am no trivia god. I am not the 2022 20, day one trivia god maybe i would have been and i've been there but i will say joe over the three years we have doing this been doing this show has definitely outranked me when it comes to south park knowledge because he continues to watch it and binge watch it on a daily basis i just watch it once a week because i want to have it be fresh for you the listener so i can laugh each and every week with you <laughs> shout out to you dirty jay <laughs> 
<laughs> Let's get into some trivia. So this was the first ever Easter special of South Park. Easter was previously mentioned in Quintuplet 2000, however. When Jesus throws his star-shaped weapon to kill the Pope's assistant Bill at the end, it is a reference to the 1992 short film The Spirit of Christmas, in which Jesus throws his halo at Frosty the Snowman in the same manner. Kenny, of course, also throws a ninja star in the Season 8, Episode 1, Good Times with Weapons at Butters. Kyle's painting features the Star of David when... Stan knocks on his door asking for help. <laughs> Kenny and Butters are not present in this episode. This is, of course, the first episode of season 11 to not feature Cartman prominently or in any way <laughs> other than that beginning. Uh, uh -huh. It seems that Cartman did not know that the Easter Bunny in the mall was just the man in the costume, showing that mm -hmm. he still believes in the Easter Bunny. Mm -hmm. Mr. Teabag's widescreen television is a Sony, spelled with a C, a Sony, C-O-N-Y, of course, as a, a Sony. Sony. This, of course, differs, though, from the episode uh, such as Tiss and The Return of Chef, where the television sets are labeled phony, F-O-N-Y. A couple quick notes here for some cop pop culture references. As we mentioned, this is, of course, based on the movie in the 2003 novel, The Da Vinci Code. The scene where Stan finds his dad dressed like a bunny is a parody of a similar scene from the 1985 film Teen Wolf. <laughs> uh, the scene where Jesus is throwing the glav and puts on his sunglasses are references to the movies Blade and Cruel. When crawl, 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 when crawl. Members, crawl, crawl, crawl. When members of the Hair Club for Men brought the rabbit Snowball out, they sang in Latin, which is an ode to Snowball, to the tune of... Here comes Peter Cottontail. It's a real song. And at the end of the episode, why white smoke is seen coming from the chimney of the Vatican. This occurs after they elect a new pope. Actually, I didn't know mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Never watched one of those multi-day live streams of when the pope. Man, my grandma was so obsessed with Pope John Paul II, I believe. And then I remember she had that on for the entire week that I believe it took for him to like pass on. And wow. then to, and, and it was the decision too. the decision took so freaking long. And I think CNN, MSNBC, someone just had the live stream. A couple places had because so many people were watching and my grandma would just have it on constantly all the time, even at night, even at night. <laughs> all, all the cardinals would go to bed. My grandma still be watching the fucking chimney in the Vatican. Pardon my... <laughs> yeah, I think maybe it has to do with age. As I've gotten older, I've noticed I'm watching more politics and stuff like that on nah. season. I don't know. I'm watching like grown Not me, movies. bro. I don't know. I am. Anyway, continuity. Here's some references to continuity from other episodes. This episode has the first appearance since Red Slay Down for Jesus. Mm -hmm. uh, that, was, of course, was in when Jesus died. Uh, when Jesus orders okay. Kyle to kill him, right? Because that's how he saves Hannah. Uh, mm -hmm. When Jesus orders Kyle to kill him, Kyle says he has a complex of killing Jesus. This is, of course, a reference to the season eight episode, The Passion of the Jew. Mm -hmm. and the fact that Cartman has ab been abusing him for being Jewish all of his life. And the last thing here is in Stan's room, you can see that there is a cyborg Bill doll that is on his dresser. <laughs> when have I ever made fun of you for being Jewish, Kat? All right, now we're gonna. I normally don't do goofs here, but there is a couple of stuff here, and this has. There's goofs, and, and uh, I think that Dane maybe can confirm or not. Or actually, you know, Joe would be able to do it too, as he's Catholic, but he's not here. Uh, mm -hmm. This episode claims that Saint Peter was a rabbit. However, Peter was seen in human form at the gates of heaven in Best Friends Forever episode. Actually, I guess that's just a goof in general. As a Catholic, I can confirm that one, buddy. <laughs> uh, uh, Jesus claims his superpower only exists in death, meaning he would have a new body outside the confines of the Vatican prison. However, the miracle of resurrection purports that Jesus arose in the same body he was buried in, meaning in reality he would still be stuck behind bars unless someone came and freed him. Well, that's a good point. And uh, after presenting the rabbit to the Vatican, Stan and Kyle get handcuffed. Later, when Bill betrays the Pope and steps up to the position, Kyle and Stan are seen with their hands free. That must just been a little goof here as far as on a little animation there. Yeah. But that is your references to trivia, your pop culture, your mm -hmm. continuity. I guess I didn't do the pop, pop, A spread pop, of vernola for you. <laughs> uh, Dave, what would you like about this episode? 
Uh, let's see here. Um, so I love when South Park is at their best doing uh, sort of a bridge of two things that they're making fun of. This one being the Da Vinci Code, Bill Donahue, um, the concept of Easter, you know, and that that's also a great add on. It's uh, the the making fun of two things, the parody of two things and the inclusion of kids being kids. And that's a kids being kids thing. Everyone's thought of that. It's like, wait, wait, wait why do we do this? So I uh, I liked all that. And then also, you know, they didn't go hard on the Da Vinci Code, but there was obviously some uh, callbacks to not how ridiculous that was, because that's not what this episode did, which, you know, maybe I wish it did. But that's nitpicking. And also I want us. But uh, it did it did have some Dan Brownieisms in there. And Dan Brownieisms is the favorite kind of ism for me, because I could make fun of that dude forever. Those books would- are. I would say that just the room, but in the Vatican, they literally it's like Tommy Wiseau. I would say like, that this, I would say that this Easter special was definitely fun, but mm. not safe, uh, which we'll eventually see later when <laughs> on Easter special. Fun <laughs> yeah, and safe. <laughs> yeah, fun and safe. Uh, with the Jupacabra, we'll, we'll we'll get to that a little bit later in a, some further seasons down the line. Um, I agree with what you said. Uh, I always found this episode to be kind of funny as well. Mm. Kind of a vindication of my thought as I got older. Like, yeah, what the hell? Why are we painting eggs? Thank God. Somebody <laughs> did it. Like somebody freaking – I'm asking these same questions. Like, thank God somebody <laughs> made the answer to me. And, of course, they purported in this Da Vinci Code. Now, I never watched the Da Vinci Code, and I have a nah. problem. I have a really bad problem to where if South Park makes fun of the movie before I have a chance to see it, I won't see the movie. <laughs> Did um, you not see the passion? Like uh, the thing is, no, I saw passion because I was, okay, okay, I, okay. I, I, was I, I saw it. Um, I saw Inception before I saw the South Park episode. So then after I watched the South Park episode, I was like, oh my God, that movie was dumb. No one's a great writer. <laughs> it's inside of a pizza, inside of a taco, inside of a KFC, inside <laughs> your mouth. Anyway. <laughs> ba, 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 ba. Uh, Inception. Uh, Avatar was another one I saw before Dances with the Smurfs episode. So, if, But if there are movies, around, there have been movies where I'm like, oh, God damn it. Now I can't see that movie because South Park made fun of it. Um, so this was one of those movies, I would say. I, I'm the opposite. I have to see those movies immediately afterwards. Yeah, I never saw the Vinci Code after that. I, the the only I, the only reason I've ever seen movies like The Abyss is because of South Park. The only honestly, the only reason I know about people like Phil Collins is because of South Park. Are like, you really coming in hell? Or <laughs> yeah. Hold on. I mean, they're making fun of this poor boy, Jimmy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. That's going to do it for another edition of Blood by Blood. Blood by A South Park. The South Park podcast. Of course, I'm your host, Nahit, and I can't be beaten. Your guy who's high with the air is dry. Your boy, M to the S to the G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G. You can follow us as a podcast by going to South Park Pod basically everywhere. And then you can go to linktr.e slash South Park Pod. You can also send us an email, suckmyballspod at gmail.com. We're also at South Park Pods with an S on Twitter and South Park Podcast on Instagram. Once again, shout out to our boy, <laughs> Dr. Joe Vernola. <laughs> Botany Scoopanomics. He is dirty, dirty, dirty Joe, Joe, Joe Vernola. Do you hope, uh, go check out Primo's Pro Wrestling. Uh, they recently just had, or it's either coming up or just had Frank's Bash at the Beach, which took place in Denver, Colorado on Fight TV. Yeah, it must have been last Sunday, I think is what it was, because Joe was working. So that would have been Sunday, January the 9th. So go- <laughs> January the 9th. 8th, I'm sorry. So go check that out right now on Fight.TV. Subscribe, and you can uh, check out the uh, episodes every month from Primo's Pro Wrestling, as well as you can check them out. Some of the wrestlers are on AEW Dark Elevation from a couple of weeks ago. Dane Becker, the man who likes to solicit those pictures to get those clips. <laughs> Dagger Day. You got anything you want to put over today before no, we, before we go the on our way? Nothing to put over. Um, no, no. <laughs> it's just...
<laughs> kept responding as you went to like Territy Farms Five. Let me no, see. I don't. Have, I don't know a fucking thing, bro. Uh, let me think. Uh, no, just a few personal projects going on, but nothing to announce so far. So, uh, no, no, just uh, uh, keep listening to SMB, keep getting those clicks. And keep giving us those pics. Don't actually do that. There's, <laughs> I'm not actually soliciting pictures. If you're a fan, don't ever talk to me. Don't. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been our honor and our <laughs> pleasure to be with you here today on another mm. edition of SMB mm. South Park Review. Mm. Don't forget, love your neighbor. No way, I'm not ending the podcast like that. No, come on, man. Come on, come on. You got to do not a little. Not a little. I'm not committing to that. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for another edition of SMB. We'll see you back next week on Lesbos. I don't know. I guess they like scissor or something. Lesbos. My guys.